Hello, uh, I'm uh, Marta Eike. I'm a tech technician. <laughs> I work in the Data, Data Protection Authority in Norway, uh, Data Tilsynet. Um, I work with in information security um, and I've been working a lot with education, um, been on inspections at schools and the municipalities in Norway. And I also work with um, cloud computing, um, with the digitalization of the public sector, uh, as well as been part of writing a report about big data and also uh, privacy by design. A little bit about the Norwegian Data Protection Authority. We're 40 people working in Norway. Um, we're an independent public administration authority. And we're both an inspectorate and ombudsman. We go to inspections at uh, people that, um, or businesses uh, that uh, control um, personal data, both uh, public and private sector. And we also have uh, do guidance, uh, you know, uh, if companies want to have a, a meeting with us, you know, to just ask uh, what laws, uh, what regulation, what do they need to do? We also do that. And we are interdisciplinary teams now, bo both lawyers and technicians and social scientists. Yeah, and of course we administrate the Personal Data Act and regulations that, um, where, where there is personal data. Today I'm just going to speak briefly about what is data protection or privacy. Um, a little bit about the Personal Data Act and which um, sections of the, the Personal Data Act is relevant for the cloud computing. And how to comply with the Personal Data Act and some issues that must be considered when, when choosing a cloud service provider. And also a little bit about the current work going on right now in Norway and in the EU and uh, internationally. So what is data protection all about? It's about autonomy and so that you have, you know, you can self-determine where your personal data is, who, who controls the personal data, uh, how is it processed and, uh, you know, before col collection of the personal data and also after deletion of the personal data. And when you know, you also have the right to choose and uh, this leads to predictability that the companies that have the personal data will not use the personal data for other purposes than originally um, the purpose of collecting the data. And this will entitle to trust so that people can trust where the personal data, that the companies that have the personal data. And also, of course, information security surrounding the personal data. This, you know, when, when, when I come to inspections or, or speak with people, it's very often common that they think that personal data is, you know, name, social security number or address. And they don't think that personal data is also um, things that can say something about you. You know, what um, things that they can say something about your behavior. Uh, in the law, it's actually and I had to write this down because it's in Norwegian and I had to translate it. In the law it says information and assessments that can be linked to an individual. Picture, biometry, something you know when, when uh, especially when you're in school and you're, you're um, handing in a, um, a report, you know at what time of day you do it or uh, how you've done it, you know, it's, it's something that can say something about you as a person, about your behavior. And that's also personal data and needs to have the same information security as other um, personal data. Just briefly about cloud computing. It's really not something new, but it's just become a lot cheaper and a lot easier to use. So then it's uh, more relevant to talk about. 
um, and it does not, line, uh, does not uh, uh, touch the line of responsibility. The company um, is the data controller of the personal data. And the vendor or the cloud service provider is the data processor. And that's the terminology uh, written in the law and which we have to, to, to um, talk about yeah, and use. And cloud com computing does not uh, imply lack of control. And if that is the case, it's against the law. Important legal requirements. And I will not go through the law in total. It's just internal controls. It's routines that you need to have in place. Um, I'll, 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 I'll get to that. But it's, it's internal controls and information security and processors, which is this, the cloud service provider or the, the, um, the vendor, what they need to, to pay attention to. And they need to, I mean, we have the personal data regulation chapter two, which is about information security. And the, the processors also need to follow the law there. Um, and I'll go into specifics on that. And other relevant, re relevant requirements is the, the Personal Data Act uh, 11b, which is explicitly stated purposes. You should not use the personal data in other, for other purposes than originally collected. And also the, there's regulation about international transfer of data. So information security, it's quite similar to other regulations on information security. But what's, most, uh, what's um, different in, in uh, the Personal Data Act or the, the, the regulation here is the 2.6, which is on discrepancies. I mean, companies have, have inf um, incident management. Um, but also in 2.6, it's if you have an unauthorized disclosure of um, personal data requiring confidentiality. You also need to report to the Norwegian uh, Data Protection Authority. So you should have an incident uh, um, management system at, at your company, but you should also report to the Data Protection Authority if there has been an unauthorized uh, disclosure. Also, many people think that personal data, you should think of confidentiality. We should also think about integrity and availability, especially you know in, in health. Uh, if there is a health incident with someone requiring uh, medical attention, it's it's really essential that that um, the right information is available at at the right time. And then there's a 215 in security in other enterprises. This is the the the. Um, data processors um, ob obligations to follow the law. So this, uh, yeah, information security and the regulation. And how to comply. Internal control. It's like uh, what Tone said about well, not, maybe not leaving the kids at home, but leaving home in the morning and you want to find the, your home, the house, in the same way as you left it in the morning. You know, you, you, you have routines to turn off the light, to make sure the stuff isn't on, um, to, to put on the, the alarm and lock the door, you know, just to make sure. And you have to have the same routines for, for personal data. You have to have routines for uh, transparency, you know, so that people know how, how they can um, be able to, you know, know what kind of data you have on them. You know, if you don't have a legal uh, requirement um, for, for um, processing the data, it should be a consent, an explicit consent. And people should be, be able to correct the data if it's, if it's incorrect. They should know what kind of data you, you, 
process about them and also be able to correct it if it's wrong. And also there must be um, deletion of data when it's not, when the purpose is over. You, you don't have a purpose for, for um, processing the data anymore. The data should be deleted. And people should get information about the data. And information can be on a privacy policy on a website. That's the easiest way to give information nowadays. But first of all, you have to have an overview of what kind of data, what kind of personal data you have. And you must classify it from sensitive to not sensitive. And sensitive personal data is information about racial or ethnic origin, political opinions, philosophical or religious beliefs, and also criminal, if, if there's uh, information about uh, a criminal act or a suspicion suspected of a criminal act, and information about health, sex life, and trade union membership. That's sensitive information. But information can also be regarded as sensitive for people. So we need to, and I'll show you this, you need to classify it from what is, I mean, from, from very sensitive in the, which is the meaning of the law, to also, you know, what, what can be f felt as sensitive. I mean, information about children, for instance. So this is in uh, Norwegian, uh, but it's just, you don't have to have exact, this, do this exact um, matrix in, in your business, but it's, it's, a, it's a good way, it's a good exercise to, to have an overview of the personal data. And it's um, just to, this is the purpose of the personal data. And uh, you have to have a legal basis. And then you, you know, it's not um, usually not also the, the personal data act, but it could be kind of for, um, for, for education. You have the education law. Uh, for, for having a learning management system, for instance. And it's different kind of laws that you are uh, legally um, allowed to process the personal data. And if you don't have a legal um, right to do it, you have to have consent. And this is, you know, just, it's nice to, uh, or it's not nice, it, you should have an overview to be able to know what kind of legal basis you have to have. And also, if, it's, if you have to have a notification sent to, to Norwegian Data Protection Authority, you can write it here. And, and um, also, kind of what kind of classification, security measures, storage, how many um, people are registered. Yeah, and also, if you have, have to have a data processor agreement. And this uh, um, overview. Uh, is, the, is, a, is the basis for the risk assessment. When you have this overview, what kind of personal data you have, then you can do the risk assessment. And when we go to inspections, this is lacking a lot. And you, if you don't have the overview, you don't know what risks to assess. Was there a question? No. I'd like to compare doing a risk assessment when you know driving a car. What are the chances for me to crash, or what risk is it? And I mean, it's the probability. It's it's quite small, but the consequences could be catastrophic. And then the risk would be medium. Then what kind of security measures do we have to put in? Then I would have organizational measures, you know, to check the mirrors, to have routines to check the mirrors, to tell the kids to sit quiet <laughs> in their seats. Uh, and you would have a driving license, that kind of a, um, organ organizational uh, measure. And then technical measures, you would have the sa safety belt, the airbag, a safe car. And you should do risk assessments with the personal data and the information systems. 
and also when you know when you're putting you're choosing the vendor or a, a cloud service provider you need to as do a risk assessment on using that cloud service provider first map and classify the personal data identify the threats and also the causes of the threats and then assess the consequences and the probability and compare the results and implement security measures to be within acceptable risk. And what about also considerations to think about is, you know, if the risk is acceptable now, what happens? Or, or how can you monitor and detect when the risk is not acceptable anymore? That's also something to think about. If the the cloud service provider changes something. Security audits. This is one of the, the um, legal requirements in the law, which is also something that's really happening, which is, it's really important. I mean, to, to be able to assess to review what kind of security you have in-house and also out of the house. And in the law, it says be carried out regularly. And we kind of, I mean, it's, it's regularly. And if you ask us, we would say yearly, once a year. And it should cover the ass uh, an assessment of the organization what security measures do you have in place? Are they working? And also the use of security partners and data processors. And the security audits should be uh, consisting of the, the um, self-monitoring, internal audits, and also audits with the security partners and data processors. And in this case, the cloud service provider. And we accept that a, a third party audit audit can be done with the cloud service provider. And it must be documented. And that's the same with everything in, in um, with internal control and information security. Everything should be documented. If someone doesn't show up to work the next day and is the only one that knows the routines or what the security measures are, people don't know. I very often have uh, inspections and people say, yes, we've done risk assessment, but we haven't documented it. Then how can you know? So that's, uh, that's important. And if the security audit uh, um, reveals unforeseen usage, it must be treated as a discrepancy. Data processor agreements. I compare this with, you know, you're going to take your child to a kindergarten or to a nanny, and you would kind of, you would consider the security around the kindergarten. Would you like to have the kindergarten next to a railway track with no fencing around it? Probably not. And the same thing you have to think about when putting personal data in the cloud. How is the security or what is the acceptable security at the at your in-house? And you should accept, you should have the same um, uh, requirements of standards at the cloud service provider. It should not be less. This is from the last year, which is a survey on the dark figures on incidents being reported. Um, there was a question, um, there was a more focus on, on uh, cloud computing, this, um, that survey, and also about personal data. And there was a question, do you know where the company data is physically stored or located? And 20% answered no. And this is the use of the cloud, cloud computing. And the second question was, are the company data transferred to other countries for redundancy during backup? 
and 20% said, I don't know. And if personal data is part of this, or if the, the, the companies answering this question have personal data, and they don't know where the personal data are, and they don't know if it's been transferred to another country, they're breaking the law. It's illegal to transfer data to a third country if it's not approved by the EU. So that's um, awareness. <laughs> okay, sorry about that. And also we have this question about service agreements. If there is a um, data processor agreement, if that's part of the service agreement. And 22% of the private companies said yes. And half of the public companies said yes to that. And if personal data is here and you don't have the data processor agreement, you don't you don't know how the cloud service provider can, uh, what th they can do with the data. They don't have any obligations. Just a list of um, minimum requirements for data processor agreements. And it's, uh, we have, um, uh, we have um, oh, templates uh, on data, serv uh, data processor agreements on our website. Um, and it's, they don't, you don't have to have a specific agreement that's called data process agreement. This could be part of a service level agreement. But it's just, you need to make sure that the purpose is specified and not that the, the data processor or the cloud service provider cannot use the data for other purposes. So it should be specified. And also, the, 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 um, how the personal data is processed should be described. And the use of subcontractors. And that's to ensure that you know if there are any subcontractors and also mm. if where they are based. If they're based in a third country which is not approved by the EU, you should not um, go into um, a contract with that uh, processor. And also the agreement must impose satisfactory information security. The same as you would require for yourself, you must require at their location. And the duration must be agreed upon. Um, yeah, there was a speaker earlier today, she said, you know, you should know about exit, what happens. So wh what happens? Uh, when you want to, to exit the, the agreement or, or um, the contract, and when is the d data being deleted? Is it immediately or is it within one month, six months, a year, uh, never? And issues to be considered? Um, backup and mirroring. Um, and also where the location of the data. You should know where the, the, the cloud service provider, where the data is located. And also if there is a backup or mirror elsewhere, is that also within EU or within a, a, an approved country? Or is it outside? And this is um, important because there could be foreign law um, or a foreign jurisdiction that may play a role in this. For example, if violations of the law by another customer, uh, this could lead to the services being, being um, shut down um, if, it's, if it's breaking a law in some other country. Something to consider. And also, is the data segmented from the other uh, data controllers? I've heard of security, uh, the security expert, he said, that he, as a super user, um, on his, uh, he, he logged on to the, to the service provider and he was able to access all the other controllers' data with his account. So it's, it's, uh, it's the data in, in different databases, for instance, who can access it. And you should know who, who can access the data at this cloud service provider 
Could, could anyone access it? And the, the, um, the cloud service, um, it should be documented. And this is important um, also for the authorities. If we come on an inspection, we need to see if it's documented, uh, if what it looks like. And you must know about the deletion, as I said um, previously. And a very important thing here, use for own purposes. Can the data processor use the data for their own pur processes, purposes? For instance, improving their own services. That's many, or some international um, vendors have that in their, in their contract. And what does that mean? You need to consider that. Can the data be used for, for, for profiles, for instance? And then the subcontractors. And also that you're able to have a, to do a security audit, a review of the data processor. And this can be done by a third party, but you should demand to, to see, the, see the report. And also, what about the secure communication? I mean, with a data processor agreement, you can be, be sure that the, the data is, is um, secure at the lo location of the data processor. But you should also see if the data is encrypted between you and the data processor, and also between the data centers. Okay. Okay, a little bit about the international cooperation. Um, we're part of an um, uh, Article 29 working party, which is um, the um, EU data protection authorities uh, working together on legal uh, issues. And uh, they gave out an opinion in 2012 about cloud computing. And this is you know, to, know, to know that you're in compliance with the data protection directive. And also the same year, there was a resolution at the International Conference of Data Protection Authorities. And we uh, also a kind of a best practice, a working paper for, from the Berlin Group, which is also international working group for the, the data protection authorities. And um, relevant or current work going on now is that there is a cloud select industry group um, that is um, consisting of um, some great international um, vendors like Microsoft, Google, Salesforce, um, working together with the French Data Protection Authority, CNIL, on, on a code of conduct. And the issue where, you know, that the, the vendors can, can have in their contract that they can use the personal data for improving their own services, that's the sort of questions that's been raised from the, from the working party. And we're expecting an opinion there, which is, will kind of solve many um, concerns that we have with the, the big vendors. And also in Norway, um, the Department of Local Government and Modernization, um, we have a reference group there. Uh, for the policy of use of cloud computing in the public sector. And the policy is due this summer. And also an interdepartmental working group is looking at the obstacles in various uh, regulations. And they, don't have s they don't see any obstacles in the pers in Personal Data Act, but there are some obstacles in the Archives Act and also the Bookkeeping Act, which are some uh, acts you need to, or some regulations you need to look at if you're considering uh, cloud computing. Okay, and, and I will finish up now. Yes. Uh, I just want to mention that for um, ANISA released uh, a month ago a um, document about a cloud, cloud security guide for small and medium enterprises, which is quite good on looking at security opportunities and risks, and the most important security questions to ask the cloud service providers. And we have guidance on our website, mostly in Norwegian, but we also have the data processor agreements in English. Thank you. <laughs>